How should we treat AI? It has been customary in thinking about the ethics of AI in the past to focus on what we suppose AI might warrant or deserve in terms of status or treatment. A better question, however, is to ask what kind of humans we want to be in relation to AI. Using the first logic, we might game all kinds of scenarios about robot ethics designed to ensure that humans prevail. But the second logic asks us to park our paranoia about control and instead work out who we want to be and how we want to characterise our relationships with AI. This is certainly the argument put forth by the robot rights pioneer David Gunkel in suggesting a more relational approach to the debate, based on the thinking that rights arise not from an entity itself, but from its social context. That said, Nick Bostrom, writing with Eliezer Yudkovsky, sets out two clear criteria for our treatment of AI, arguing that it should have full moral status if it has both sentience, the capacity for phenomenal experience, such as the capacity to feel pain and suffer, and sapience, a set of capacities associated with higher intelligence, such as self-awareness and being a reason-responsive agent. This is certainly the subtext of the advice to UNESCO on robotics ethics, that if robot agency progresses much further, sapience, and AI learns how to feel emotions, sentience, there would need to be provision made for some new kind of moral personality and protection in law, in the same way that we have awarded protections to animals on the basis of their sentience alone. In the case of moral culpability, this would require debate on what kind of consequences, sanctions or reparation would most appropriately apply to AI. Bostrom goes on to argue that AI, like any other entity, would deserve full moral status because of two particular principles which naturally follow. If AI has the same functionality and the same conscious experience as us, then regardless of whether they share the same substrate of implementation, they should have the same moral status as us, his principle of substrate non-discrimination. And if we share the same functionality and the same conscious experience, and differ only in how we came into existence, then they merit the same moral status regardless, his principle of ontogeny non-discrimination. He argues that whether somebody is implemented on silicon or biological tissue, if it does not affect functionality or consciousness, is of no moral significance. Carbon chauvinism is objectionable on the same grounds as racism.